And welcome back live to Notre Dame Stadium. A special treat for us in the post-game show. Not only do we have Irish captain Niles Morgan with us, we also have his mom, Jeannie. Niles, we'll get to you in a second, but <laughs> okay. this day's as much about her as it is about you. Yes. Mom, tell us what today meant to you to see your son play his final game in Notre Dame Stadium. Um, it meant to me that I was very, very proud of him. Super Bowl weekend is here, and the party is well underway in downtown Indianapolis, the Circle City, rocking like no other. It was another dominating performance for Notre Dame, and for the first time since 19. 89, the Irish have defeated two top 15 teams in back-to-back -back weeks. Yes, they are very much in the hunt for the college football playoff. Thanks for staying with us after the game. I'm Angel DiCarlo, number nine, Notre Dame improving to seven and one on the season with a 35-14 win over number 14, NC State. This is where the Farrell family will sit as they've sat for the last four years for games for Notre Dame. They will take the court with Matt at 640 for the pregame senior night ceremonies. After the game, Matt will get in the car with his brother Bo and his parents, and they will drive to New Jersey because tomorrow will be the funeral services for Pop. A wild night for Semi State. Lightning affecting tonight's Marion game here in town. Penn, meanwhile, down in Carmel where there was no weather issues, but the Kingsmen were lighting up the Greyhounds in the 6A Semi State. And now it's the showdown of showdowns in the national championship game. You see all the fans filing out of Bridgestone Arena as we speak because UConn just defeated Stanford in the other semifinal game. It will be Notre Dame versus UConn for the national championship. Family it means the world, um, everything. It's tattooed above Matt Farrell's heart. For me to play here and to wear that last name on the back of a Notre Dame jersey and uh, to represent my family uh, the way I have and to represent my family here uh, at this place has been a dream come true of mine. Fans, please direct your attention to the video board. On this court 14 months ago, Matt experienced one of the most incredible moments in a long time at Purcell Pavilion. His brother Bo, a then sergeant in the U.S. Army, sent Matt a Christmas message from Afghanistan. As it turned out, Bo was not in Afghanistan. He was in the arena to surprise his little brother. It's a moment Matt will never forget. This pure, pure excitement, pure joy. Um, definitely shocked. I had no idea. It was the best Christmas uh, that my family's ever had. The most exciting moment uh, that we've ever experienced together. Um, it, it's a, it was a feeling of just in, in, intense, an intense rush running through your body. Bo is now a captain and stationed in Tallahassee. He's made it a priority to be at a ton of Matt's games this year. The heavens aligned in a way for, for us to be able to have this path of, of being able to go. Um, to, to these games and spend the time that we've been able to spend together. Family. It's what drove Matt to fall in love with Notre Dame as a kid. His grandfather, Bob, is a 1958 Notre Dame grad. We came here all the time. I got my uh, Chris Thomas jersey on, I think. My grandfather, the leprechaun, my cousin Tommy and me. This is Pop. This is my grandfather uh, in the middle. He was in Dillon Hall, so this is probably in Dillon Hall somewhere. He's told me some crazy stories about when he was in there. Now, Matt was never supposed to play at Notre Dame. My grandfather would always look at me and say, what about Notre Dame? Have they called yet? And I've always like, no, Pop, they haven't called, and uh, it is what it is. But late in Matt's senior year, Notre Dame did come calling. Coach Bray came and saw me my state semifinal game. Uh, I played well, and... After the game, they offered me, and uh, that night my uh, grandfather was able to meet Coach Bray, and I think just right from that moment, everybody kind of knew that this was the place I needed to be. But the road wasn't easy. Playing behind Demetrius Jackson, Matt didn't get much of an opportunity for his first two years. Sophomore year, I was really close to, to leaving, uh, for sure. Not going to hide it. Farrell stuck it out. Demetrius left for the NBA, and Matt became ND's starting point guard, and he hasn't looked back. That is until the NC State game on January 3rd, 
when he rolled his ankle and was out. And the Irish started struggling greatly. Very frustrating um, in every aspect, in every way. So it's not been the season Matt hoped for, but he's made the most of the situation he was dealt. On Saturday, he scored his 1,000th point to give the Irish the lead at Wake Forest. And in the final seconds, he hit an incredible shot with eight seconds left to win the game. Hop watched on from his hospital bed. For him to see that game, uh, for him to see my thousandth point, uh, and, and to win that game the way we did, you know, I play. That's why I came here. You know, I'm not just playing for myself. Like I said, I'm representing my family, and most importantly, I'm representing my grandfather. Um, and just really special. Um, something I'll never forget for sure. Just a few hours later, Robert Farrell, Pop, the patriarch of the Farrell family, passed away. When you love somebody, um, and somebody like that who, who means so much to our family, um, it's hard. He was in and out of the hospital, so we, we knew the time was coming. Um, we're happy that he got to, to pass uh, peacefully, you know, and he wasn't, he wasn't struggling at all. Tonight, Matt Farrell plays his final game at Purcell Pavilion. He's playing for his teammates, his coaches, his fans, and most of all, for his family. Probably it's going to be a little bit emotional uh, with everything that's going on, but it, it's going to be something that I'll never forget. It, it's going to be very surreal, um, and I know my grandfather's going to be watching, which is the best part. <laughs> This is where the Farrell family will sit as they've sat for the last four years for games for Notre Dame. They will take the court with Matt at 640 for the pregame senior night ceremonies. After the game, Matt will get in the car with his brother Bo and his parents, and they will drive to New Jersey because tomorrow will be the funeral services for Pop, for Robert Farrell, the legendary patriarch of the Farrell family. Matt will then rejoin his teammates in Charlottesville Friday night in preparation for their game against Virginia on Saturday. Mo? Well, Pop did well, and on that was an absolutely beautiful story. Thanks a lot for sharing. It was another dominating performance for Notre Dame, and for the first time since 1989, the Irish have defeated two top 15 teams in back-to-back -back weeks. Yes, they are very much in the hunt for the college football playoff. Thanks for staying with us after the game. I'm Angel DiCarlo, number nine, Notre Dame improving to seven and one on the season with a 35-14 win over number 14, NC State. Pete Sampson of irishillustrated.com. Joining me now, Pete, we thought last week's performance against USC was impressive. This one, even more impressive. Yeah, without question. This is, this is Notre Dame's best win of the year, in my opinion, NC State's pretty well coached team very talented on the defensive line to go over 300 yards again the fourth straight game they've done that and really take on a special teams touchdown as well and then counter with a pick six by Julian Love I just thought offensive defense today against a good team with so much on the line with the college football playoff poll that first poll comes out on Tuesday night I thought Notre Dame delivered it in a big, big spot today. All right, uh, let's take you through the highlights of this one. Cold and chilly as the Irish are out of the tunnel to host another top 15 matchup. Notre Dame facing adversity early. Tyler Newsom on to punt, and it's blocked by James Smith-Williams and recovered by Jermaine Pratt for the Wolfpack touchdown. That makes it 7-0. Irish immediately respond. Huge hole created by that offensive line, and Josh Adams goes 35 yards, becoming the fastest Notre Dame running back to 1,000 yards in a season, doing so in just 10 car 110 carries. Next play, Brandon Wimbush to Durham Smythe for the 25-yard touchdown. What a response there, Pete. Yeah, I love to see the way Smythe was involved in the game plan today. He, had a, he was very productive. A la late first quarter, third and 14 for NC State. Ryan Finley connects with Jalen Samuels for the first down. That leads to Finley to Kelvin Harmon. Great catch, 12 seconds into the second quarter. And the Wolfpack back up 14-7. to seven. Next drive. Brandon Wimbush making it happen with his feet on third and 10. Uh, just simply a great play here. Yeah, he's 
one of Notre Dame's best athletes, and he came through with some big third down scrambles there. 20 yards for Wimbush there, and that leads for the rushing touchdown here. 14 play drive, three yard TD run for Wimbush. His 11th of the season, he has more rushing TDs in a season than any quarterback in ND history already. Game tied at 14. Irish defense forces a three and out. And on the next drive, Wimbush giving all the time in the world. And what a catch by Smythe for the first down. Take a look at it again, getting those feet down. Really a great play indeed. And then on the next play, really another great catch here, Pete, by Kevin Stefferson. I have been saying this all week. The reason why Notre Dame's offense is not topped out, Kevin Stefferson, number 29. Look at him get that foot down, originally ruled down. Uh, originally ruled out of bounds, but after review, they say he gets the foot down and Notre Dame gets the touchdown. They go up 21-14 at the half, first lead of the game, and it was all Notre Dame really from there. NC State with the ball to start the third quarter, and here comes Finley looking downfield, and it's picked off by Julian Love. First interception thrown by Finley this year, and Love returning it for the touchdown. Second time he's done that this season. Irish just so good in the turnover game. We knew something had to give between these two teams, and Notre Dame takes advantage. Next, NC State drive, fourth and one inside the 10, and what a stop here by the Irish. Yeah, Tavon Coney again. He's had great, great back-to-back -back performances here for Notre Dame. And then, Pete, another huge hole by the offensive line. Josh Adams, 77 yards, 33 is trucking, 35-14 ND. This is a play Notre Dame will put in Josh Adams' Heisman portfolio. It's a better play for Notre Dame's offensive line in their Joe Moore Award campaign. I mean, unbelievable job of what this offensive line, led by Quentin Nelson and Mike McGlinchey, are doing, isn't it? He's untouched against a top 20 rush defense for a huge touchdown. It, it's really incredible what the offensive line is doing. All right, fourth quarter, pretty much everything going Notre Dame's way. This is the one time, you know, we got a little bit of a scare. Brandon Wimbush taken down hard, and he was pretty slow to get up. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's an awkward fall. He's, he's trying to get rid of the football, not take a sack. And I mean, you can see just sort of really is crushed there uh, awkwardly coming down. But he does come back in the game. Uh, he's just going to be beat up. Notre Dame needs him to expose himself to hits because he's so good in the run game. And he, here he is coming back in the game, gets a first down, and Notre Dame able to run out the clock from there to get the victory 35 14. You know, in the end, it wasn't very flashy at the end of the game because Notre Dame just dominated this one in the second half and put it away. Yeah, it, it's remarkable to me. They barely had the ball in the third quarter and outscored NC State in that frame. That was a dominant quarter by Notre Dame, and they did it in multiple ways. So I was I was just so impressed with the third quarter by Notre Dame today. This was a game at that point, and then Notre Dame just sort of took NC State's will at, at that stage. So it's to come away 35-14 against a top 15 team on a day where TCU goes on at Iowa State, the first college football playoff poll comes out on Tuesday night. I feel like Notre Dame is at least going to be number five on Tuesday night. I don't think they'll be higher than that, but man, what a great starting point as we really get into that playoff conversation. We go back to that Georgia game and the loss 20-19. to If I would have told you Notre Dame would be 7-1, and one, but more importantly, would have won every one of those games by 20 points or more, what would you have said? I just thought you were crazy.